All right, everybody, this is TCL 62. We are in actually uh, about to roll into, into our week four um, recap here. So what I said last week applies to this week with regard to what week we are in and timing. Counting is hard. Um, I'm going to kick it over to Jeremiah to walk us through what we did. Yes. Hey, everyone. So we had two issues this week. Um, so it should be seven and eight. Um, so we were doing the uh, showing a prompt for a user to add their first list item. And then for the other one, we were letting users mark purchases in their on their list as purchased and then uh, doing some API stuff with Firebase. Um, so for demos, does anyone want to go first? Any volunteers? I think I can go first okay. with Jenny, if she's OK. Yeah. Yeah, so, perfect. OK. So should we start? Yeah, go for it. OK, so let me just share my screen. Okay, do you see the shopping list website yes. right now? Okay, perfect. Yes. yes, so our task with Jenny was to work on the uh, on the prompt. So when the user doesn't have any item in the shopping list, the user see the prompt, welcoming prompt that's supposed to, that the user should add the the elements to the list. So uh, we are right now on the uh, uh, home page. And when we uh, click on the create new list, we're going to create new list and we're going to be redirected to our page. And our page says that you are, your list is empty and if you get, start, get started by adding an item. So user right now should click on add item button and right now, user is able to add the uh, element to the shopping list. So that's a demo. And let's just go to the code. Oh, that's not this one. This one. So do you see the code? You do. Yeah. Uh, OK, so the first thing, uh, we work in a list.js file. And in this file, the first thing what we did, we import uh, use navigate from uh, React router DOM. And after that, uh, we create the navigate constants from this. And through this navigate, we were able to cl cr create the function handle click. And uh, thanks to this, we were able to move to the add item page. And and uh, so uh, we create the, the prompt. Uh, so we create the prompt and we create the button. And this handle click it's uh, needed for this uh, add item button. Uh, yeah. And also what we did, we uh, had to write the statement where uh, data length is equal to zero. Uh, so when the uh, uh, in, when in the list it's nothing, uh, the user see the prompt. Otherwise, the user uh, is able to go to the shopping list and add the element to the. Uh, is able to search for the item in the shopping list. Yes, so that's our code, and also uh, we sneaked a little bit of another code to our. Uh, to our uh, task and the code it's related to the add item element. So at the beginning, a week ago, I talked with Jeremiah uh, about the bug what I found. And it was a bug that uh, in the uh, add item router, the user uh, didn't have a token. If the user didn't have a token, was still able to go to the add element page and see what is there. So we add the um, statement that uh, when the 
uh, when the user has a token, it's able to go to the uh, add item page. Otherwise, when the, the user click on the uh, button and doesn't have a token, it's redirect to navigate. It's re redirect to the home page. Yeah, that's it. Any yeah. questions? Uh, no, looks great. Um, were there any challenges or anything that you learned from solving your issue this week that you want to share? Mm. Like the issue, it was pretty easy for us. So we were able to quickly, you know, uh, do it. And yeah, we didn't have any problems with it. Yes, that was pretty easy. Nice. Okay. Looks good. Nice work. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Hans and Archa, are you ready? Um, <laughs> our code is quite buggy and incomplete, but we can share what we have. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Share screen. So I think it might work best if I make a new list. Let's say one second. Can you all see the shopping list? Cool. Um, so uh, Hans, feel free to jump in at any time. We are still having some issues with our check and uncheck functionality, but um, I think if a lot of it has to do with like the syncing of an already existing list. So hopefully it'll be slightly less buggy with a new list. So let's, I'm just gonna make the list with you all here since it doesn't quite work when I try to do it with another list. But let's say we're buying a bunch of fruit and I'm just trying to populate the list with some stuff. And then we go to our list um, and I'm just going to also show you the list in Firebase. Can you all see the um, new tab I switched to? Okay, cool. Yep. So adds this onward. Mm -hmm. Give me a sec to show up. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so if you see right now, there's no date last purchased, and it's never the total purchases is at zero. So um, if I click mango here you'll see that it updates the date last purchase to current time and total purchases to one we have a test timeout set for 15 seconds i hope that's working so hopefully soon you'll see it it's meant to uncheck after there you go it's meant to uncheck itself after 24 hours um but we have it set right now for testing purposes to uncheck itself after 15 seconds so that's all working. The issue is that when you try to um, reload the list, let's see if it shows here, it is checked again, even though it shouldn't be checked again. And then when there's multiple things checked, it starts to get funny too. Um, and it'll, on one click, it'll start to check multiple things that had been previously checked. So, um, the mango unchecked itself there after 15 seconds. Banana will again, but now if I check guava, all three of everything I've ever checked before gets checked. So yeah, they're, uh, I'm still trying to figure some of that out, but we have we have some of that acceptance criteria in there. It's just isn't quite um, able to sync properly. Okay, and then do you want to show your code? Hans, you want to talk about that part? Uh, I can just switch my screen share, or if you want to share the screen, Hans, either. Um, I guess, yeah, let me just uh, 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 switch over to the right branch real quick. I didn't, was not expecting this, just one moment. I can uh, share the thing if you want to chat about it here, if that helps. Yeah, uh, sure, yeah, that works as well. Uh, yeah, so um, kind of in the current state, um, you know, naturally we've got first and foremost our click handler, which is in this case very simple. It's just um, 
setting the is checked state, which is then of course handled down below in the uh, uh, input tag. Um, we have the user, uh, we're also implementing the use ref hook, which we have imported um, uh, within the first use effect that we have there. Um, Archer, remind me, in, the, in this current iteration, or how many use effects do we have? Just the one or do we have two? two? We have two. We have yeah. two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this one, we are, um, uh, you know, at the top setting mounted to being use ref uh, with uh, a Boolean data. Checking within that first use, uh, use effect is that if the... Uh, uh, if the component is mounted and uh, if is checked is true, uh, then you know we are we moved some stuff from our click handler down to the use effects where we're setting the time value, we're setting the unchecked time, um, and then um, you know of course running through both in local storage and the, uh, uh, with the local storage set item and the update item for our fire store database. Um, those are all getting updated with, within there. And then, um, of course, with the else statement changing the, you know, if 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 the ideally if the timer runs out with this, then uh, it'll the mounted state will switch over to true. Um, and that is just to add a little context. The this first use effect is meant just to update the uh, time, like the date last purchased, and. Um, so that time is stored because we need to know when to uncheck it. But we were having this issue since uh, a use effect will run when the page first loads, that as soon as the page loaded, everything was being assigned a date last purchased on first load. Um, and so to make the use effect only run on an update, like a check and not on the first load, we researched and found this use ref of mounted is is what stops it from doing that because otherwise the default behavior of a use effect is that um, it will also run when the page first loads. So we were seeing this bug where every, when we first loaded the page, every single item in the list had a date last purchased of the time we loaded the page. But don't know yeah, and then I guess the ideal just as what we did. <laughs> yeah, and then I guess this uh, this next uh, this next use effect hook is uh, sort of like the 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 main dish of everything, uh, where we're actually um, implementing the time uh, the time at which things should be unchecked. Um, so you know, of course, establishing constants for the time that you know everything has been either checked off and stuff, um, and then just checking. The you know the stored times for which we've uh, we've checked the items against the uh, I guess I don't know uh, Archer some of this seems a little actually kind of uh, kind of new to me from what I've got on my screen uh, maybe you can uh, uh, walk me through this yeah I think that hmm, I hadn't changed anything in here but yeah it's just checking it like what you were saying Hans the stored time against the current time so whatever time. Um, it is when the person <clears throat> is the user is checking the box or is loading the page or whatever. It's checking to make sure that the current time is, if it's less than 24 hours, it'll do a certain thing. It's more which it should be to keep it checked. And then if it's more than 24 hours, it will uh, uncheck it. And yeah, we have it doing it both in local storage and in Firestore. And it seemed redundant, but then when I went to take out local storage, it created a whole other bug that automatically when you, as soon as you check the box, it automatically unchecks it, which um, is, you know, which we had that bug earlier and that's when we brought in the local storage. So we can't quite figure out how to simplify it without reintroducing that bug um, of, a check leads to an immediate uncheck. Uh, yeah, so logic is somewhat working and it's just not quite quite there yet. But yeah, we have that. We use that built-in set timeout. Uh, that's part of JavaScript, which just lets you run a certain function after the one time, after the amount of milliseconds you pass to it 
which right now for testing purposes, like we mentioned earlier, is 15 seconds. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. How did it feel trying to, because you definitely had like the, I guess like the harder task this week. So how did it feel, you know, having to do that research to try to find a solution when it wasn't something that like just came to your head um, from like reading the AC? Like the yeah, research think, portion of it. I think that there was a, like, I think something that maybe became clear was that we kind of just went with, like, maybe we could have asked some clarifying questions around the acceptance criteria. And um, some of it was a little unclear because I think maybe um, in the that conversation we were having on Friday with also with Jeremiah and Lila, it became unclear that it became clear that it was actually kind of confusing what was expected. And maybe there it could have just been taken a little, you know, simplified even if the acceptance criteria said it wanted something, because um yeah, it seems like to actually implement the acceptance criteria fully in the most, with the most, you know, features and nuances would take even more uh, steps than, than what we have done here, so. Um, but yeah, it also uh, is really making me think about use state a lot because like, it seems like such a simple React bug, but it actually has, is what is the root of what we're trying to do here and is really, like thinking about all those nuances of when does it update and it's asynchronous mm. and and how does it store the state and yeah definitely. what's causing it to change the state and then even just like when you try to quickly change state back and forth which can easily happen with a checkbox like a user could quick easily check and uncheck a box multiple times that can mess with use state too and uh, mm. because it's asynchronous so it just yeah, I think that's kind of what's getting us is where the states are being stored is not, something's not updating properly in that. And it seems like a straightforward hook that's has more nuance to it. Solving state in front end applications is a pain in the neck. And that's why mm -hmm. it's been reinvented uh, dozens of times with, with different <laughs> solutions to this problem. Yeah. Um, so we are going to schedule a working session at some point. You're saying um, to dare tomorrow sometime. Um, I can follow up with uh, you guys on to what is the best time to do that. But I am going to move us on to the retro because I feel like it is going to take a few minutes um, to get through that as well. So I just want to say good work. Um, I know this one was a slightly challenge, more challenge. Uh, let's try that again. There's a slightly more challenging issue this week than ones that we've seen in the past. So um, it doesn't surprise me at all that we've run across a little bit of problems. You guys are still working through them and you're doing an excellent job to the other two that like wrapped it up and got it in. Like, great. Awesome. Like, you guys are, guys are doing great too. Um, just want to say you're on track, you're on progress, doing exactly kind of what we did expect at this point in the project. So keep up the good work. We'll figure a couple of things out and we'll keep going. Um, I'm going to pass the torch over to Grace now. So I'm going to relink um, in the uh, chat. Um, if you guys can take a few minutes to fill out the retro board. Um, and while you're doing that, I do also want to kind of pose a question to you guys. Um, do a little something different. Um, I'd like to know what your goals are individually for, um, for what are you trying to get out of Collab Lab? Because I do feel like we would like to, as mentors, we would like to encourage you guys more to, um, if you have time throughout the week, um, reach out um, and hopefully um, take advantage of the office hours. Um, and if you have any questions outside of the Collab Lab, like if you have like career questions, um, now is a really good time, especially during office hours, um, to kind of pick our brains and um, just really try to get what you can out of us. Um, because between the three of us, we, we do have a lot of experience and I do feel like um, the knowledge is there um, for everyone to kind of, like I said, take advantage of. Um, so if if um, if you guys want to do that in the retro, um, 
but kind of kind of just think about like what um what you could do to take advantage more of blah blah or what what you want to get out of it. And if anyone wants to go first, you are more than welcome to as well. Um, while of course multitasking and trying to throw out the after board, so. Just so I'm clear, the, the current retro board is the one that you most recently sent, right? That's the one that we're supposed to be working into? Uh, correct. I think I can kick it off. Um, the first one, the first appreciation um, is from me, uh, just shouting out everyone. Um, I do feel like everyone works really well together and that's very impressive. Um, so I just want to call that out. Um, let's see. Um, let's just go down the list. Um, who wrote the next one? It was me uh, just appreciating last week. Uh... Like that was my partner and she pair programmed with me like right after she got off a of flight and powered through probably a lot of jet lag and fatigue. And uh, this week, I'm going to shout out Hans for both of us like together persisting through a complex yet to be solved issue. And it looks like Jessica wrote the next two. It helps if I unmute, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so, uh, Arjun Hans, like, y'all were doing a really good job at communicating, opening the thread, working through your issue, you know, we kind of did see what was going on and stuff, um, and, you know, you're doing it in a, in a visible way, that stuff is awesome, that's how you get, you know, kind of the help we need to, 
um, help triage issues and get them across the line. I love that pattern. I love seeing more of that. Let's let's keep doing that. Um, Jenny, you guys just powered through, powered through your issue. Got it, got it straight across the line this week. Um, you know, excellent work. Like we got it in there. Good, feels good. Cool. Um, and then I believe um, Magda, you wrote the next few ones. Mm, yes. So first, Jenny for being my partner this week, and thanks so much for her to being open mind and flexible. And I love her thought process. The next one is Archa, and thank you so much, Archa, for trying to fix the errors with me and working with me when I was really, you know, really tired and helping to understand all of the issue, what we had to do. And also big thanks to our mentors for driving all the meetings and being very helpful to us. Awesome. Um, I'm not sure who wrote this um, next few ones. I can just read them out loud. Um, thank you to Archa for um, being communicative and providing positive feedback when necessary. Thank you to the other pair for making such a thorough PR description. It was very easy to work with. Uh, that was me. I forgot to put my initials in the thing before I clicked enter and could not find an edit button to add my initials. Okay, no worries. Um, and then I appreciate Archa for giving the rest of the Dev62 team a heads up on the status of their ticket. I'm not sure who wrote that one. My bad. That was also me and <laughs> same issue as Hans. Couldn't figure out a way to go back and add my initials. Um, yeah, yeah. I just appreciate the um, constant communication um, from from Archa, just like you know, keeping us up to date. Um, that was really great. Uh, and then the next two are also mine. Um, it was really great working with Magdalena this week. Um, our task was a little bit more open ended, um, so it was fun, just like collaboratively thinking through, uh, you know, what what would be useful for a user to see. Um, uh, you know, with this more kind of a little bit more open ended issue. Uh, and then the last one, I just appreciate the mentors continued, um, you know, uh, contribution of time and flexibility, um, with the, with the devs. Awesome. Um, and I also just realized I wasn't sharing my screen, so, um, I appreciate you guys, uh, keeping up with me. Um, let me just share that right now. Um, two seconds. Okay, there we go. Um, what went well? Um, Archa uh, says updating our project boards more frequently, cleaning up tech debt. That's very awesome. Um, Lyle, half of the issues merged before the sync. And the team is very proactive about letting people know when things are ready for review. That is something that um, you guys have definitely improved on. And um, we definitely appreciate it um, because it's hard between the noise and Slack and, and through GitHub. So um, we definitely appreciate that. Um, these next two from Jeremiah, um, great communication from everyone in the threads and in Slack. Uh, requesting PR reviews has definitely improved. And we got a bit behind and we're doing a good job of catching back up. Um, and then while um, while we're thinking about what could be improved, um, has anyone thought of any um, anything that they would like to add as far as like your your goals for what you want to get out of Cloud Lab, because um, that's definitely something I want to just keep in mind of um, so we can make sure that we're helping you guys achieve your goals. Um, I'm just sharing mine in the chat here. You want us to also put it on the board? Someone? Um, you can, um, we can just talk about it really quick. Um, I don't know. Okay. Do you, want, oh. do you want me to share it out loud? I can do that too. If you um, you can. Yeah, okay. So my goals for Collab Lab are to just have like a lot of high quality work to use as part of like a informal portfolio when I apply for jobs uh, and not just like a launched app, but the actual, you know, the part of Collab Lab is the showing the workflow. So the detailed issues, pull requests, things like that. And then also uh, building my professional network so that I can have uh, folks that I'm growing skills with and also like helping in job searching. So, okay. And then while everyone else is kind of um, hopefully thinking about um, your goals, um, we can move on to what could be improved. 
Um, so making use of office hours, um, definitely um, we would we would like to just encourage you guys. Um, I know that time is kind of um, difficult to to organize between so many of us, um, but definitely take advantage. You're more than welcome to. I know for me, um, if you guys want one on one time, just talking about anything career wise or just anything. Um, like, you know, uh, my background is um, I've been a software engineer for two years professionally. So um, I feel like I have more junior advice to give to everybody. Um, definitely take advantage of that as much as you want to, um, even after the cohort. Um, so that's just something I want to throw out there. Um, and then from Lyle, uh, we could have used some swarming for helping get, get out issues across the line. Yeah, um, I want to talk about that one for just a second. So we haven't talked about this up until now, but I want to introduce it as a concept. Um, as you'll see it a lot in professional land. Um, you'll get towards the end of a sprint or you'll get towards the end of a larger unit of work, um, usually, you know, a, a project or, um, you know, a feature or something along those lines. And uh, you'll find that there's usually some work kind of lagging while um, other work is, you know, getting done. And that's a situation where you want to evaluate, can you have more people jump in on this and solve a problem? or not. Um, in this case, I think, uh, you know, if we're still um, working through some of the date uh, last purchase stuff, potentially, you know, you can reach out to the other team members or as the other team members complete your work, you say, hey, can anybody use, you know, our help, you know, with, with your issues, you know, getting things across the line. Um, if nothing else to, you know, kind of brainstorm act with questions, but maybe, you know, chunk up pieces of the work and, um, and share part of the load. So I think one thing I want to do uh, going forward in the next few weeks is just, um, you know, as we get to sort of the end of our issue, let's check with the other teams and see if we can't like, um, you know, distribute resources um, as necessary uh, to get, you know, see if we can, you know, help work things through. Um, that being said, sometimes the answer to that question is no, um, to where like, can we throw more people at this than you get to remind people, you know, you can't, bake a baby in shorter than nine months you know that kind of that that metaphor um there's there's some things we'll, we'll take time to work through uh, but it's something you want to look for those opportunities when they present themselves and see okay next awesome um next is hans um sharing of resources and research giving each other time to consume documentation this is a really good one uh to point out do you want to add anything else hans um, I mean, kind of, kind of self-explanatory. Just, um, you know, the because we all have like, I'm assuming, like such busy lives outside of the lab lab. We're kind of like grabbing at straws to find the the moments when we can like actually sync up and work together. Um, if there's, you know, instances in which we find that like we can make um, like progress or have done some research that would be helpful um, to the the task at hand, uh, it'd be a good idea to like, just like share the. Um, just share the the ideas that we found online or or through whatever means with our pair so that that person can have time to kind of like go through it, figure out why they, you know, uh, like, like what they learned. And then that would kind of just help the, um, the, the, the process of like working together better if everyone should basically just get it, making sure people are on the same page when they sit down to, you know, like collaborate. So <clears throat> uh, next is okay. Jeremiah asking clarifying questions slightly earlier in the week could help get things done. Um, Jeremiah, do you want to add anything to this? Uh, just that the AC isn't always clear and sometimes it can even seem contradictory. So I'm um, asking those questions before you get too deep in like coding out a solution can help uh, you with like the amount of time that you're going to spend on it and then also help you like have a clear clearer image of you know where you're going um what you're trying to get done that's awesome and uh jenny and magda it looks like um you guys have the same sentiment getting more out of office hours uh going forward um again i don't want to keep harping on it um but definitely um feel free to just reach out to any of us mentors um in fact one of the other things that the other mentors of the other cohorts have kind of brought up as well um, if you guys are interested, um, we're happy to coordinate um, you talking to any other mentor outside of our cohort. Um, if you feel like um, 
you know, you have other questions that we haven't been able to answer. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, you have all these resources. You're more than welcome to reach out to us um, either now between the end of the cohort or even afterwards. You know, we're here as a support system. Um, so we, we really want to support you guys however, um, however you feel is needed. And I'm going to kick it back off to Lyle and I'm going to stop sharing. Sorry, I was making weird squinty faces. There's apparently a bug in my monitor. Not like a software bug. I mean, like an actual crawling around bug, like walking around behind the windows. It's very distracting. Um, okay. We'll pretend like it's not there. I think it's just a Linux to... thing. Oh, okay. Right. It's, a, no, it's not a bug. It's a feature. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to um, go over and talk about the things that are going on for the next set of assignments which i have right here all right uh can everyone see firefox yes yes cool all right thank you um so we have two issues for this week um worth kind of sitting here for a second and looking at what's going to come next um, towards the final half of the project here. So we're going to have these next two. Uh, I want to be alerted when I'm entering an empty item. I want to have my next purchase day estimated. This is going to cover the bulk of our functionality. Um, and then as a user, I want to be able to delete items from my shopping list so that my list isn't cluttered. So it's something we haven't touched on yet, the delete operations. And then uh, 12, as a user, I want to view a list of my shopping list in order. So sorting and ordering. So um, we are getting the base layer of functionality done in this next week. Then the uh, next two weeks are going to be um, some cleanup stuff, deleting, um, tidying of the list, sorting and ordering. So that'll come up. Yeah, uh, you know, kind of subsequently after that. And then we're going to get into issue 13. Issue 13 will be distributed across everybody. Um, and it'll take a full two weeks worth of work to get done. And it will be very open-ended, which is to say, like, however you want this app to look and feel once that app functionality is fully installed, this will be the time to get to work on that. I mentioned a little bit of this last week, but it's worth bringing up again. So um, just you know, kind of thinking through how you'd like to approach the actually making it look like something that you'd want to hang out in and do your grocery shopping in and stuff. Um, this will get there pretty quick. Okay. But for now, let's focus on the next two. These are going to build on things we were just doing for uh, last week's stuff and lay the foundation for the rest of it. Nine, as a user, I want to be alerted when I am entering an empty item or an item that are, is already on my list. So we're doing a little bit of form validation here against the list that exists. I'm making sure we don't put in goofy inputs. Summary, the users shouldn't be able to add an empty item to their list or add the same item twice. If they do try to do this, we need to show them an error message that explains the problem. This way we'll prevent some clutter in their lists. So no dupes um, or empties. So show an error message if the user tries to submit an empty item note. This is a discrete error message from the next one, which is show an error message if the user tries to submit a new item that is identical to an existing name. We have some clarification on what identical means in a minute. Um, but for if the list contains apples and the user adds apples, we're not gonna let you do that. You only get one apple on your list. Um, then we show an error message if the user tries to submit a new item that matches an existing name with punctuation and casing normalized. For instance, this list contains apples and the user adds a capital P, P, L, S, or apples, comma, or a space P, P, L, S. So there's some special characters kind of in there. And then the user's original input is saved to the database. So if I type in a space P, P, L, E, S, or a capital P, 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 L, E, S. That is the thing that gets saved in the Firestore. And that is the thing that I am going to display on the list. But the validation is going to check uh, casing normalized and punctuation and spacing removed um, against other entries in the list, casing normalized and, and spacing removed um, for uh, is the criteria there. 
So it's just something to keep in mind as you go through thinking about how to solve this problem and adds an extra layer of complexity. Note that there are a couple of ways to approach this task. If you are not sure how to begin, ask your mentors for advice. Kind of a thing we just mentioned in retro there. Um, we'll say everyone I've seen try to accomplish this task jumps to regex first. You don't have to use regex, but you can if you want to. I just don't like regex at all. I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now that we've got that out of the way, any questions before I move on to the next one? I like this one a lot because I get to come up with fun testing criteria for it in ways to like, I can almost always break the list in some fun way. Um, so I'll get you. I'll find the hole in your validation one way or the other. But otherwise, it makes sense. Feel like if you dropped in, you know what to do. Okay. This one's a little bit, it will take some explaining to do. Um, so 10, as an item, I want my estimated next purchase date to be computed at the time my purchase is recorded in the database so that the app can learn how often I buy different items. Okay. In order to advise users about when to purchase things, the app needs to be able to calculate that guess and store it in a future or in store it as a future date typo in the grammar there. Um, the calculate estimate function from the Colab Lab Shopping List Utils module will help us know how many days in the future a purchase should happen. In order to use calculate estimate, we need to know how many days have passed since the time was last purchased. Um, it's just worth noting here that if you kind of have looked at previous versions of the TCL project, we didn't do it quite this way. Um, we sort of had a uh, different criteria for when to do this. Um, so this is a deviation that's relatively new. Um, the acceptance criteria here is when the user purchases an item, the item's date next purchased property is calculated using the calculate estimate function and saves the Firestore database. The date next purchase is saved as a date, not a number. A get days between function is exported from the utils dates. I think those are all already in there and imported into uh, API Firebase. This function takes two JavaScript dates and returns the number of days that have passed between them. There's some notes in here about working on Firestore dates. Firestore returns dates as special objects called timestamps. You will need to convert the timestamps to JavaScript date in order to work with them and complete this feature. Uh, so you might need to go read the docs and talk about the uh, type format conversion that we're talking about here. Um, and then calculating the uh, time between JavaScript dates uh, and comparing and manipulating JavaScript dates is notoriously tricky. It's always tricky in every language. JavaScript is particularly annoying about it. And here's a hint, all eight date objects have a get time method that returns a representation representation of that date in milliseconds. Nice little Unix timestamp there. Um, that can be helpful. Calculating the next purchase date uh, module should already be installed in your project. The module exports calculate estimate. To calculate estimate except three arguments. They are in order of the previous estimate, the days since last purchase, and total purchases. Uh, Da, 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 da. Given this information, calculate estimate returns a whole number indicating the number of days until the user is likely to make their next purchase. Okay, so there's a lot to digest in here. Um, basically, what's going to happen is we're going to take some parameters from before. Uh, basically, when did we click the button and when did we last you know, um, purchase this item and then figure out how often they're doing that um, just based on N minus one in terms of which click we're on and then guess as to how much uh, further in the future they're going to try and click this again. So we're not manually telling the system how often I want to purchase this thing. We're going to figure it out by the last time that we did this check. Um, So the previous interval becomes kind of important there. Uh, and we'll need to stay, save some extra information in Firebase. I assume we have questions on this one. No, did that make sense?
suspect we'll have some more as we get in there too. Um, so note that this one, there's a lot of stuff that's already kind of done for you legwork wise. So there's some of these functions that are in there as well. We will have to fill in some of the gaps for stuff that doesn't exist. Um, and use this to do kind of a calculate function based on the, you know, the previous dates that we've stored on the item. So just keep that in mind as we get in there. And then again, this one is applying a lot of form, showing errors on the form, validation-y stuff, and uh, checking a bunch of different regex, or not regex, as you may decide to do, um, against the, the text that's being entered. So tricky stuff. Should be a little bit more challenging than ones in the past. So where did I put my project brief? Yes, okay, so this one. We now are going to have uh, Magda and Hans and Jenny and Archa. Does anyone want to jump out and grab one of the two issues that we were just talking about? Uh, I think Archa and I are interested in issue 10, but if the other team is also happy to flip for it. I actually wanted to say nine, so I'm probably good. What about Hans? That should work with me. I'm not I'm not picky. Perfect. Easy enough. You guys didn't need to do any rock, paper, scissoring at all. Fine, fine, fine. All right. Um, so how do you show up right? There you are. And then Okay. You okay. Now you've had the air sitting here chewing on it for a second. Questions, clarity. You want to add on these guys as we go? I know I'll have questions as we dive into the issue. <laughs> I expect so. Like I said, this one's this one's always fun because there's there's always a way to come up with a tricky way to type in something that'll blast through whatever validation gets in there and then test the error messages. So I would suggest both working through the testing criteria you want to use up front on this to validate that what you did is correct whether that's just you know the words that you type in but be sure to save that and put that in your pull request um so that other people know hey here's what i tested and you should test to verify this behavior um that's my suggestion there um and then this one will be kind of apparent all in and of itself um but uh you know and we'll talk through a little bit on when I do the working session for the one that's still open, um, what we'd want to do in terms of validating this behavior, because I think it will tie into how we want to ideally validate the behavior for the one that's in progress right now. Um, but effectively by um, doing some date manipulation on the Firebase side, we should be able to do the kind of testing in there. Um, Closing thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, praises, fun stories about weekend adventures. I don't know. Anything. Anyone else want to add to their goals? I can open up a thread and just be more annoying about it. Um, I uh, I kind of do actually just want to uh, piggyback off of Archie a little bit. And, uh, you know, she said just, uh, uh, you know, growing the professional network and, and, and gaining experience while having portfolio piece. I also just, I, you know, my, my big concern is that when I finally swindle a company into paying me to do this stuff for a living, uh, they're, I'm, I'm, they're going to realize within like five seconds that I am a hack fraud and nightmare. And so like, you know, a big goal of mine is that when I do enter my, my first job, I'd like to be, you know, I, I want to be a pleasure to work with. And I, I want to, that's kind of like why I'm here is I want to, I want to learn how to collaborate better. And so that's, you know, one of my goals from getting out of this is just, yeah, coming at the other end, being someone that, you know, that when hired, people are glad I'm there and 
and, and actually want to work with me and are not like, ah, oh, Jesus, what, what have we done to ourselves? Just to add to that, the imposter syndrome never goes away. It just gets quieter and quieter as you move forward in your career. So don't don't stress about that too much. As a uh, contradiction to that, I will say that the industry itself is actually just full of hacks and frauds. Like some of them are the most successful people in the industry. So the imposter syndrome is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, if you're feeling like that as you go through and then you realize that actually that's kind of what everyone is in this whole thing. And some people just get better at it over time. Um, you know, <laughs> like so yeah, you'll still kind of always feel that stuff, but I think you'll settle into a sense of normalcy in that like the job isn't knowing everything. The job isn't being perfect expert in all things. The job is, can you figure it out and make things work and people will pay you if you can do that. And the uh, specifics on figuring it out and making it work are going to be different every single time. That's the skill, not the, I know how to do x and x and react or blah 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 like those are just proof that you can figure it out not that i want to call any of you a hack or myself a hack even though i definitely am okay anything else uh, right. One one question. So the, um, I guess this is more for the mentors. Do you all know uh, maybe what the other groups are, like maybe what topics they might be covering during their office hours, like maybe specific to, you know, helping uh, maybe around like career wise. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, or, or, or maybe like what you all have found in the past to be kind of mm. helpful in addition to like, I don't know what material. yeah I don't know what exactly the other groups are doing but I know that like as a collabie uh there were a few that I thought were there were kind of like extra learning modules that aren't really planned in TCL but they were like really helpful I thought because it's not stuff that would get covered uh like naturally or organic or yeah naturally so but they were things that came up organically like um like our, if you go back and look at my groups, uh, we have a few extra issues that got added in as bug reports. Um, and there isn't like a, uh, like a template for bug reports in the TCL thing, but um, we like stole the one from Lyle's work and used it to report uh, a few bugs. And then um, we like distributed those to groups that had more time. And then we filled them out like they were the regular issues. Um, and just learning, you know, like what's helpful to have on a bug report and um, that kind of thing is a good experience because, uh, you know, before you get your first job, the place that you're most likely going to run into that is like if you are contributing or working with open source or if you are um, working on a project and using a library like all of those libraries are on GitHub and they might have issues that are open. And so if you come up across a bug with them and you want to report a bug, you want to make sure that you're giving the developers like the best and the most information so that way they can try to like replicate it and solve it and that kind of thing. And then when you get that first job, like making sure that you can give your coworkers like uh, not just I, <laughs> it doesn't work, but uh, like what you tried to get it to work and that kind of thing, um, that one stands out. Awesome. Which um which group were you in? Just so I can find that. Uh, I was in TCL fifty five. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um. Yeah. The problem with the the office hours is is that they're rarely recorded. Although sometimes it's a good mm -hmm. thing because it allows you to feel a little bit less like you're gonna be on camera during them. But yeah, I've done the bug reporting thing before. We've gone over testing, um, in depth before. We've gone over debugging. Um, you know, and strategies and hooking up the browser and um, breakpointing and all that fun stuff. Um, talked about how to like bring up, oh, I found something new and cool to, um, you know, your place of work, um, which may or may not be always receptive to the new and cool thing and when those are good ideas and when they're not. Um, just random musing on, on how to stay, you know, current and sharp and stuff. And, um, you know, we've talked about a bunch of different things at different points um 
so there really are just kind of stuff you got on your mind um and as you know you kind of said before if like a single time that we've been putting out doodles or whatever doesn't work out for you um for whatever reason uh just say hey can we do a different time can we do two can we do some more talking stuff um i think we're all you know kind of happy to do that type of thing um so whatever we want to make them work definitely can appreciate it guys Any others? Last, 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 last notes before we hit the uh, stop button. Sorry, we took a, minute, a few minutes to get rolling today. But... All good. Thanks, everyone. All right. I appreciate you. Um, good luck this week. Like I said, we're getting into now. Once we get through through these couple of issues, we'll start to feel like we have a pretty functional app. Um, you know, just a couple of lingering things, but it'll be mostly you know kind of feeling like the thing getting to be where we want it to be and that's an exciting time because then you start to feel like you actually built something um so good luck let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you on slack bye